I want us to read a book. This book is entitled Bisi Akonde, My Participation. Bisi Akonde, My Participation. You see this book? Bisi Akonde at some point became the deputy governor of your state. Under Bolaige, he would later become the governor of Osho State. In his autobiography, he wrote a lot on Ige. Chapter 25 of the book is titled Death of Bolaige. It's a book I would like you to have. I want to read from chapter 25. Bisia Kondi says on the evening of December 23rd, 2001, I returned from a trip to the United Kingdom. I was met at the Motala International Airport by a team of top officials from Oshun State, including my Attorney General, Dr. Yemi Adediji, and Shola Akiumi, the SSG. I drove in my car with Akiumi and we headed for Ushubu. We took the old road from Ibadan, passing Iwo to Oshubo. We had passed Iwo and getting close to Oshubo when Akin Umi's phone rang. Muiwaige was on the other end. Akin Umi was just shouting, Ah! 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 Then the line went off. Uncle Bola has been killed. Akiwumi announced flatly when he finally gathered himself. I was shocked. I did not know what to do. For the second time in my life, I had suddenly become an orphan again. I'm reading from Chief B.C. Akonde's book, entitled My Participation. Akonde continues, Ige was more than a political mentor to me. He was my uncle, my friend, my confidant. His loyalty was total and his love was deep and profound. For me, he was irreplaceable. When we arrived at the government house, I gathered my entourage together and broke the tragic news to them. There was an uproar, groaning and mourning and general confusion. Someone suggested we should pray. We bowed down our heads and prayed. By the time the prayer ended, I noticed that the commissioner of police was now with us. He had walked into the center gingerly and was now standing close to me. Before we greeted, his phone started ringing. He gave me the phone. It was President Obasanjo on the other end. Baba Bisiya Konde is telling a story in his book. His autobiography, entitled My Participation. He is quoting the president. Now, you see the lapses in your security? Look at what happened to Bolaige. The president was shouting, at the other end, I was enraged at him. 
You must be out of your mind, Mr. President. How can you say lapses in my security when Bolaige was killed in Ibadan? I rule in Oshun State. I'm not the governor of Oyo State. When his cap was removed at the Ife Palace during your wife's chieftaincy ceremony, what did you do about it? You can see the argument between Bisiya Kondi and Olusegu Obasanjo on the phone. You see the importance of reading the stories of men, men of time, men involved in the events, some sad events, some progressive events. Are you with me as I read from Chibisia Kondi's book? Chief Lekon Alabi is the guest on the show. He has a story to tell. Chief Lekon Alabi was a press secretary to Bolaige. Beyond that, Lekon Alabi, Lekon Alabi is a renowned journalist. I'm laying the groundwork. Are you with the radio, man? It is the story of pain. It is the story of wisdom. And it's the story of progress. It's the story of deep thinking. I'm now on page 350 of the book. So Bisi Akonde says, Obasanjo cut the line. I gave the CP back his phone. Everyone was silent, except those who were weeping silently. Few minutes later, Obasanjo called back on my own line. He started sermonizing. You know that Bolaigi too was my friend. What happened was very unfortunate. It occurred to me that what concerned the president more was not to arrest the assassins of his friend, but to prevent social unrest and calm and calm the nerves of the populace. I told Abbasanjo we would take all necessary measures to prevent a breakdown of law and order. I sent messages to traditional rulers and other leaders that night so that they would know we were all bereaved. It was an airy night, and nobody thought of sleep. By 5 a.m., dawn crept on us, and I got the report that armed soldiers were in every major town of Oshun State. That morning, I drove to Ibadan to meet the widow, Justice Atinukeige, who stood with her husband, throughout his colorful, turbulent, and rewarding public career. She was a formidable woman in her own right, who had risen to become a judge of the Court of Appeal. Few years earlier, they lost their first son in mysterious circumstances. Now, this... She was in shock. I also commiserated with Olufunsho and Muyiwa, Uncle Bola's two surviving children. I started the show with their voices. You heard their story of their dad. If you are just joining the broadcast, I'm reading from the book, My Participation. An autobiography written by B.C. Akonde, former governor of Oshun State, a Bolaigis man. The foreword of the book was written by Professor Wale Shoinka. 
Let's read more. Don't forget, state affairs is a class, a class of history, politics, and power. And books are crucial to what we do here. So if you are interested in getting a copy of the book I'm reading, you can order a copy from the WhatsApp numbers pinned to this broadcast. The numbers are pinned to this broadcast. You can also go on udarabooks.com and get a copy of this book. Bolaige wrote some books before his death. I will introduce you to those books. This is a comprehensive analysis of the Bolaige story. And this is just the first of the analysis coming from this studio. More analysis will come. What lessons are we to take away? from the rise, from the visionary leadership of Bolaige. What lessons are we to take from the brutal murder of the Attorney General of the Federation under Olusegun Obasanjo? This book is quite revealing. I might not be able to read all the chapters, so I will advise you to get a copy of the book. He said, now, she was in shock. That is Bolaige's wife, Atinuke. I also commiserated with Olufunsho Amuiwa, Uncle Bola's two surviving children. Then I went to Governor Lam Adishino's official residence at Agodi. We discussed the events of the last 24 hours of Chief Ige's life. He had arrived from Abuja in the morning and headed for his brother's house in Lagos. Uncle Georgie was a retired federal permanent secretary. He was ill, and his junior brother insisted that he must go to the hospital, and he accompanied him back to Ibadan. So Bolaige left his brother in the hospital and headed home. As was his custom, Ige was preparing to spend the Christmas with his people in Esaoke, where he heard the traditional title of a Siwaju leader. He would normally hold a feast on Boxing Day, December 26, and all of us, his friends, would join him to celebrate. That day would be an open house and all members of the SRK community would troop to Ige's expansive compound. So by the time Ige entered Ibadan, preparation for Christmas at SRK was in top gear. Most of his personal staff especially those in the kitchen, had moved to Esauke to await his arrival. Instead of going to Esauke, Uncle Bola decided to spend the night in Ibadan. He went to his junior brother, Sadelegi, to have a dinner and then retired home. Are you following the story? Funsho Adegbola and Muyuwaige had told me a story of how their dad was assassinated that day. I will be releasing that podcast soon. And if you heard the story, you would have a deeper analysis of the quest for power. What has politics become? But in this book, Bisi Akonde is telling his own story. Muiwaige was there when the assassins came in. So Muiwaige was an eyewitness. 
you will hear his story someday. And I look forward to bringing Muyuaigi and Funsho Adibola to this studio to broaden the narrative that they gave at some point. Let's read on. Bisia Kondi says, as soon as Bolaigi got home, his security details and personal staff, learning that they would not be traveling to Esauke again, went out to look for dinner at a nearby restaurant as soon as they dropped their balls. Shortly after the left, some gunmen invaded Igi's residence. The house was at the end of the street. Behind it was a swamp of undeveloped bush, which terminated in a dead end. They overpowered the only gate man who had been working with Uncle Bola before he took up the ministerial appointment with Obasanjo and mashed him upstairs. All the doors were opened and they soon accosted their quarry in his bedroom. There, they shot him and fled. His wife, who was with him, was locked up in the toilet. Muyuwa came in shortly and discovered the horror. 